How's it going everybody? Brother Kimo here from Reload Hawaii. Thank you for watching another video. If it's your first time checking out my channel, please consider subscribing to my channel by clicking that subscribe button down at the bottom. Don't forget to click that little bell on the side so you get notifications to when I post a new video. I talk about a lot of things here at Reload Hawaii. Like tonight, we're going to talk about this FMK that I got for 270 bucks against this Generation 5 Glock 19. Now this video is a little bit longer than normal. The FMK ran into some issues, this guy right here. So be sure to stick around all the way to the ending to see what's going on. But other than that, let's see if the FMK can keep up with the Glock 19 Gen 5. Waited a really long time to get a hold of this FMK. Really didn't make sense for me to bring it into Hawaii because of the large cap magazine capacity. I'd have to get them blocked. And just so happens the Glock 19 Gen 5 came out. So I figured let's get them together and see how they do against each other. All right, let's check them out side by side, starting off with the magazines. You get two 14 round metal magazines with the FMK. You get three 15 round robust polymer magazines with the new and improved orange followers with the Glock 19 Gen 5. You get three and two 14 rounds versus 15. Let's have a look at the pistols. Both are compact in size, so they're roughly about the same size. All the controls are in the same place, right? You got your magazine release, a series slide stop. Slide stops are going to be a little bit larger here on the FMK than the Glock, but of course the Glock now has it on. Oh, bam! Bolt side, so we'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, but let me tell you what I like about the FMK the grip angle is a lot more pleasing, it's more straight up and down versus the Glock that's a little bit more slanted sideways, as you can see that way. And it's got a nice palm swell here, however, the Glock does have replaceable back straps that comes with it. So I like the grip, feels really natural to me. Uh, both have the trigger safety, a lot of improvements done to the Glock trigger on the inside that uh, internally is done that has been done that you won't be able to see here. Bigger trigger guard here, accessory rail in the front. I like the takedown levers here. They're a lot larger on the FMK than they are on the Glock. Like little micro tiny takedown levers there. Accessory rails in the front. I don't know if I mentioned that, but there they are. Nice. And I like the way the FMK slide is milled up here. It's tapered up to the top. It just makes it a lot easier to line up. Similarities here. Check that out. Both U-grooves in the back. And I think now the Glock sights are metal versus plastic. I think that's an improvement that they made over that. But that's one of the things I like about the FMK is that the slide looks really nice. You know, helps you line it up. Nice sight picture. Uh, you have a loaded indicator here. So that pops out, that little orange thing, like a little orange nipple there that sticks out there. And uh, those are the things I like about it. The grip angle, the way that the slide looks. And this uh, palm swell in the back really helps out the grip angle there. Uh, let's talk about the Gen 5 here, Glock 19 Gen 5, because there's some improvements that were made. Five external ones that you're going to notice. The first two being, you know, there's no grips here, uh, finger grooves here anymore. Yeah, there's no grips at all in here, but no finger grooves going back to Gen 2. So that makes this feel a lot better, in my opinion. You know, you don't have these things that make your fingers go in there. And a flared out magwell. You can see here, there's a little flare. Not competition-wise, but a lot fatter. Uh, as you saw in the slides in the beginning, that it's a lot bigger uh, than that Glock 17 Gen 3. So no finger grooves, flared out magwell, improved barrel, right? That's a crown barrel with improved rifling. That's the Glock Marksman barrel. Nice beveling in the front. Finally, that blocky, glocky look is gone. Makes it look a lot more modern. Nice, sick new black finish called NDLC. To me, this looks a lot blacker, a lot slicker. It's supposed to be more corrosive resistant and scratch resistant. So sick. And of course, again, we have the ambidextrous slide stop here. Still pretty small, but hey, you know, that's going to make some people happy. Also, uh, it maintains the Glock 4 reversible magazine, so you can, or magazine release. Uh, and it's bigger than previous generations, too. So you can take that out, switch it to the right side if you want to do that. So those are the things that are great about it. Those are things I like about it, especially that finish. Look how black that looks. That's totally sick. Uh, but let's get some specs. All right, let's get them on the scale here. FMK. What is that, 1.7? Yeah, okay, it's pretty good. I have a feeling it's going to be close. Here is the Glock 19 Gen 5, 1.7. So close. Let's have a look at the FMK trigger right here. You see that safety in there? So that doesn't feel too bad. There's your wall. Nice reset there. 
All right, let's try it again. One more time. There is your wall. Clackety clack. And your reset. Not bad. It does feel a little bit heavy though. Okay, let's see what's going on with this Glock 19 Gen 5 trigger. They did a lot of internal improvements to that, so let's see if I can feel a difference. Uh, so far, not really. See the reset. Actually, feels a little bit better. Still a bit mushy though. But does feel a lot better. All right. There's your Glock 19 Gen 5 trigger. Okay, let's look at the FMK trigger pound pullage here. Poundage. What is that? Seven. That was seven. That's seven again. 7.0 pounds. That's 7.0 again. Let's call that seven pounds. Next up, Glock 19. 4.9 pounds. 5.0. And the last one was... 5.5 ah, let's call it 5 5.2 pounds or whatever back out at range 702 using ammunition from nevada ammunition 115 grain standard range stuff glock was up first you know squeezed off a quick five round burst here then it went 14 or 15 it did its job it handled it no hang-ups no misfires no hang-ups perfect all right so then we went to fmk did a little bit of slow fire here just check it out. Good lock back on the last round. Five round burst. Good lock back, no hang ups. I think this is a 14 round dump here. Yep, there goes 14 rounds. And what I'm trying to show is on one of these, the wheels start coming off. I don't think it's this one. I think we're still doing okay here. Nope, okay, this is it. So there was a failure to lock back on the last round there. And then things started getting weird. So this is the accuracy stuff where I'm just slow firing. And here you can see it's not all the way into battery. I had to push it in with my thumb, squeeze off another round. Still not all the way in again. You can see the trigger is just free. You got to push it forward again. Did I do it one more time? Yeah, I think I did it one more time. And you can see that the trigger is jacked up there too. And I think I get a last round lock back here. Or do I? Nope, it does it one more time. I think it did it on all five rounds because I fired, I fired five rounds for the, the accuracy testing. And then I had a last round lock back. Was it a fluke? Let's try it again. Nope, see there we go. I can see, I can just see it there. It didn't go all the way into battery. You know, am I limp wristing it? I don't think I'm limp wristing it. Could it be the ammunition? Well, we're gonna find out a little bit more afterwards, but here we go, so it's, it did it again, right? Continuously not going into battery. It's just almost there. It's like I have a weak guide rod spring or something like that, or recoil spring. And one more. Yep, push it forward. And I think here I get a last round lock back here. Yep, okay. Let's check out the accuracy stuff I got going on. Here's the Glock at seven yards, just pummeling the target. Man, I really like that Glock trigger. And you can see here that the FMK at seven yards, I was just having trouble you know, dealing with those failure to get into battery. Here's a Glock at 10 yards. Oh, I just goofed up a little bit on that last shot. Anticipated, jerk downwards. Uh, here's the FMK at 10 yards. It was shooting so high at 10 yards. I was basically aiming down here at the 15 yards we're gonna see. So there's a Glock at 15 yards. Uh, nice grouping for me there. Uh, if I could just drop it a little bit, I'd be okay. But I had to aim at the bottom of the target to get it to get on paper at 15 yards. It was really crazy. So that bothered me. So I went over, I took a break, I ate some lunch, went over to Bass Pro for about a half an hour, and I used different ammo. You can see the Bass Pro shop um, sticker there. And I used their range to see if the same type of malfunctions would happen. So here's what I got with new ammo, different range. Yeah, I can see it. That was a lockback, failure to lock back there. Uh, what's this one? Yep, there we go. I can see it's not at the battery again. So it's a different ammo. Okay, got that. Yeah, it didn't go all the way. I can see it again. Yep, okay, and then this one. What is this one here? Uh, yep. 
Don't know what's happening there. That was failure to lock back on the last round. Okay, that's good. That's two, three. Okay, here's where it started to get a little bit better toward the ending of everything, but I still don't have that last round lock back. And I think right here, here we're gonna see five rounds as well. Two, three. Yeah, and then again, I think it's not gonna lock back on that last round. So at least I got it to function with all five. I'm not too sure what's going on there, but here's what I did find out. So I might have an idea of what's going on with the FMK here as far as they're not going at the battery. So check it out, all right, pull. See that right there? But look, and then it goes into battery. I'll try that again. I'll, I'll yank it. And it doesn't go all the way in. You can inch the trigger forward or you can slap it forward, but that's what's going on there. Now, if you rack it super hard, right? You let it go, it'll go back every time. But if you don't get it all the way, it'll do that. Now versus, you know, just to show you with the Glock, right? It doesn't matter what you do with the Glock, that spring is going to yank it forward no matter how much you try to slow it down. So I don't know if I got to break in the FMK, put some more rounds down range, but uh, hopefully it'll figure itself out. If not, I'll reach out to FMK to see what they say. What are my final conclusions? Glock 19 Gen 5, obviously, in my opinion, even though the price difference is so big. I like not having those finger grooves in there. The improvements they made on the magazine are really great. It's very easy to remove them and reload them. The flared out magazine well, the color of the new finish is awesome. Uh, and of course, the removal of the finger grooves on the grip, awesome. So Glock 19 Gen 5 all the way for this review. Now, I'm not gonna give up on this guy yet. I'm gonna put some more rounds on range on this thing. Hopefully it'll break in. Uh, I'll try to do maybe like another 500 rounds or so now, but still not behaving. I'll get in contact with FMK to see what's going on. But I think this is still an excellent value at $270, but I can't recommend it right now because of the failure to get into battery. I mean, that is just devastating for a self-defense gun. So guys, I hope you found this review useful. If you liked the video, please give me the thumbs up, share it as much as possible. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do. And as always, I'll catch you guys later.